first. After his security clearance was revoked by President Trump, former CIA Director John Brennan made his strongest statements yet about Trump campaign collusion with the Russian government. In a New York Times op-ed piece, John Brennan wrote, Mr. Trump's claims of no collusion are, in a word, hogwash. The only questions that remain are whether the collusion took place constituted criminally liable conspiracy, whether obstruction of justice occurred to cover up any collusion or conspiracy, and how many members of Trump Incorporated attempted to defraud the government by laundering and concealing the movement of money into their pockets. A jury is about to deliberate bank and tax fraud charges against one of those people, Paul Manafort, Mr. Trump's former campaign chairman, and the campaign's former deputy chairman, Rick Gates, has pleaded guilty to financial fraud and lying to investigators. John Brennan revealed some of what he, as CIA director and then FBI director James Comey, discussed about Russia's attack on the election during the presidential campaign. In my many conversations with James Comey, the FBI director, in the summer of 2016, we talked about the potential for American citizens involved in partisan politics or not to be pawns in Russian hands. We knew that Russian intelligence services would do all they could to achieve their objectives, which the United States intelligence community publicly assessed a few short months later were to undermine public faith in the American democratic process, harm the electability of Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton, and show preference for Mr. Trump. Once again, President Trump's official written position was contradicted by President Trump himself. This time in an interview with the Wall Street Journal. A statement written for the president and read yesterday by the White House press secretary said, any benefits that senior officials might glean from consultations with Mr. Brennan are now outweighed by the risks posed by his erratic conduct and behavior. Mr. Brennan has recently leveraged his status as a former high-ranking official with access to highly sensitive information to make a series of unfounded and outrageous allegations, wild outbursts on the Internet and television about this administration. But then last night, in an impromptu interview with the Wall Street Journal, the president contradicted his written statement giving no indication whatsoever that he had actually read that statement written in his name. The Wall Street Journal says the president revoking John Brennan's security clearance and publicly considering revoking other security clearances is based entirely on John Brennan's involvement in the beginnings of the investigation of the Russian attack on the American electoral process. The president said, quote, I call it the rigged witch hunt. It is a sham, Mr. Trump said in that interview. And these people led it. He added, so I think it's something that had to be done. John Brennan says that he believes the president's increasingly erratic behavior, including the revocation of his security clearance, is because Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller's investigation is closing in on the president and people close to the president. Mr. Trump clearly has become more desperate to protect himself and those close to him, which is why he made the politically motivated decision to revoke my security clearance in an attempt to scare into silence others who might dare to challenge him. Now, more than ever, it is critically important that the special counsel Robert Mueller and his team of investigators be allowed to complete their work without interference from Mr. Trump or anyone else so that all Americans can get the answers they so rightly deserve. The list of people who the White House revealed yesterday might have their security clearances revoked by President Trump has been compared to President Richard Nixon's enemies list, which was revealed during the Watergate investigation. It was certainly alarming to discover that Richard Nixon had an enemies list, but no one was even slightly surprised that Richard Nixon had an enemies list. And everyone on Richard Nixon's enemies list wore that designation as a badge of honor for the rest of their lives. And that seems to be the reaction so far from people on the Trump enemies list, which the White House said yesterday includes former director of national security, the National Security Agency, Michael Hayden, and former director of national intelligence, James Clapper, who said they will continue to speak up against the policies of the president. And someone who was not on the Trump enemies list probably is now retired Navy Admiral William McRaven, who was in command of the 2011 Navy SEAL raid that killed Osama bin Laden, wrote an open letter to the president in The Washington Post today saying, former CIA Director John Brennan, whose security clearance you revoked on Wednesday, is one of the finest public servants I have ever known. Few Americans have done more to protect this country than John. He is a man of unparalleled integrity whose honesty and character have never been in question except by those who don't know him. Therefore, 
I would consider it an honor if you would revoke my security clearance as well so I can add my name to the list of men and women who have spoken up against your presidency. Joining us now, Mika Oyang, former staff director for the House Intelligence Committee and vice president of the National Security Program at the Third Way. Also with us, Rod Klain, former chief of staff to Vice Presidents Joe Biden and Al Gore and a former senior aide to President Obama. And Stuart Stevens is with us. He's a Republican political consultant and chief strategist for Mitt Romney's 2012 presidential campaign. Uh, and Mika, I am so struck uh, by uh, what is now turning into an honor roll. And here we have the first step forward saying, uh, please revoke my security clearance too. Yeah, it's what you're seeing is the national security community really up in arms about what's happening here in defense of John Brennan, because the reason that he, Brennan, is so alarmed about what the president is doing and is continuing to do is what he saw when he was the director of the CIA, the kind of information that he knows about the Russians' attempts to get into the Trump campaign and to sway the 2016 election. They're concerned that when you attack someone who has so loyally served the nation for raising alarms about hostile foreign powers interference in our political process, that you are really undermining the basic foundations of democracy. Uh, Ron Klain, we are getting uh, what is actually, I think, uh, the usual spin from the White House whenever the president uh, has done something uh, truly kind of ugly. Uh, there's always that. Uh, report coming from inside the White House that the president is thrilled with how ugly it is and he wants to do more of it. This, of course, does not mean that the report is true or that he's going to do more of it. But here's what The Washington Post is reporting tonight. President Trump has told advisors that he is eager to strip more security clearances as part of an escalating attack against people who have criticized him or played a role in the investigation of alleged Russian interference in the 2016 presidential campaign two White House officials said. And so, Ron Klain, there could be more. Uh, there could be more. There will be more. I think we're seeing Donald Trump truly unhinged. Uh, we're seeing him upset by the continuing uh, disclosures from Omarosa, the, uh, uh, the trial of Paul Manafort, uh, the fact that uh, uh, Bob Mueller is getting closer and closer to his conclusions. But I think today he bit off more than he could chew. When you have someone like Admiral McRaven, who is unassailable in his character and his commitment to our country, step forward and say, if you're going after John Brennan, you have to go after me too. And, and Lawrence, at the end of the day, we're, we're back to where uh, these people were on May 1st, 2011, when Admiral McRaven was leading the effort to kill Osama bin Laden. John Brennan was overseeing it from the Situation Room, and Donald Trump was hosting an episode of Celebrity Apprentice. You know, and that's really the choice we have as to who we're going to trust about uh, making the right decisions for national security at this stage in the game. And uh, Stuart Stevens, uh, the Washington Post is reporting that the White, Ho White House aides have confirmed uh, that Trump made his decision weeks ago on Brennan. They didn't have to confirm that because we saw the document yesterday dated uh, July 26. That's how incompetent they are in this White House. They couldn't even put that day's date on it. And so we know they've been sitting there with this waiting for the day when they needed it. And apparently uh, the president decided uh, Omarosa was getting the kind of attention that meant they needed to uh, trade news subjects from Omarosa to John Brennan. Well, the whole idea of Omarosa uh, doing, having any impact on what happens in the national security apparatus in the United States is chilling. <laughs> but let's remember, Steve Bannon uh, got fired before Omarosa did in the White House. And Steve Bannon had top secret security and was on the National Security Council for a while. And, and Steve Bannon is just a flat out freak. It's really just a shame to have this sort of politicization of people who have really worked to protect the country. And I think Republicans should speak out more on it. If you're going to have a process of reviewing whether or not X uh, officials should have security clearance. There's an organized, methodical way to do it. The way that this looks, it just looks petty and it looks vindictive, sort of like another feud with Rosie O'Donnell. And uh, Mika, we, NBC News is reporting that uh, Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats was not informed beforehand about this uh, revoking the security clearance, had no idea. The NBC News report says an official familiar with the decision confirmed to NBC News that the director of national intelligence, Dan Coats, was not informed before the announcement. 
Yeah, that's very unusual that we would have the intelligence community who actually are the ones who are most likely to seek to benefit from Director Brennan's experience if they need to call on him, not really being part of this conversation. I, I mean, Dan Coats literally could have been on the phone that morning with John right. Brennan about some previous business that had occurred during John Brennan's time and not known that the security clearance is being revoked. That's right. It's really surprising that this is not a decision that's coordinated through the other agencies because there may be important things that he's working on that are classified that he can't talk about. Now, he said he hasn't had access to classified, but when you have an ongoing crisis, many of the things that he worked on may be relevant and you might want his advice later on. And uh, Ron Klain, in, in uh, John Brennan's op-ed piece uh, today, and, and I can't wait for his interview tomorrow night with Rachel, uh, he seems to take another step forward uh, in, in his uh, statements about the president, this time saying, of course there was collusion. Uh, we saw it, we, and we saw the president do it publicly by asking uh, Russians for help. And the question is now just a legal one. Uh, Robert Mueller's question is, does the collusion uh, that John Brennan knows about and that surely the special prosecutor is looking at, does that collusion meet the technical legal definitions of conspiracy and violations of law? That's right, Lawrence. I mean, I, th I think this is a very important point that former CIA director Brennan makes in his piece today. Uh, the collusion between Trump and Russia really has been hiding in plain sight uh, since the campaign, since uh, the, the, obviously the meeting at Trump Tower, uh, the president uh, standing up and saying, hey, Russia, if you're listening, please find her emails. The evidence we now know that that very day the Russians went out and tried to probe for Hillary Clinton's emails, there is ample evidence of collusion. Now, that's, that's, a, that's an important conclusion for our country about the Trump presidency. It's a separate question whether or not that was a crime. And that's what Bob Mueller has to make an initial finding on, report to Congress potentially about impeachment, report to courts potentially about criminal charges. That's a separate question. But I think it's, I think it's very uh, fitting that uh, Director Brennan stepped forward today and really put a fine point on the fact that uh, the idea when Donald Trump stands up there and says, no collusion, no collusion, no way, not right, not true, there was collusion. Uh, and Stuart, I, I want to go back to your point about uh, basically what we saw happen in the news, a trading Omarosa for John Brennan. And I spoke to someone uh, right after this happened who's known Donald Trump for many years, worked with him in show business, knows his moves, and said, I said to me, he's a day trader. Uh, he's just trading one story for the other. He's just, uh, you know, that's the way he plays this. Well, we're living in a strange world where you can turn on cable news and hear recordings from the uh, situation room, but John Brennan's considered a threat and we have to take away his national security clearance. I mean, it just, it just doesn't parse. And the, the problem with this stuff is that, as you were saying, what you would think would happen behind doors just happens in plain sight. I mean, we know that there was cooperation with the Russians. Now, What's the difference between cooperation and collusion? I'd leave that to lawyers, but as somebody who worked on five presidential races, the idea that you would talk to Russians about how to help your campaign, it's just mind boggling. Stuart, Donald Trump said every campaign would do it. It's just not oh, wow. true. I mean, Ron's worked on a lot of campaigns. Um, you, just, you just wouldn't do it. I mean, for heaven's sakes, uh, the... Uh, Gore campaign got a debate book that was sent to them, and the first thing they did was call the FBI, and the debate book didn't come from the Russians. It's just an absolute misunderstanding of how people really care about standards that are involved in this process. And sure, you want your person to win, but it doesn't mean you want to cheat and you want to help get help from the Russians. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.